<laughs> I'm here, Goody. I'm here, Goody. I'm here, Goody. Yeah, <laughs> you see me. <laughs> yeah. Say hello. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Ah, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, baby. Yeah. All oh, right. You good. <laughs> he loves people. Yeah, yeah he loves people. <laughs> He's very clean, don't worry. He's very clean. Yeah. We clean him four, five times, six times a day. <laughs> yeah, because they come in muddy, you know? Muddy. And they want to clean with vinegar. <laughs> he loves. <laughs> He loves people. See? Yes. Yeah. You saw him on TV, huh? <laughs> Good. Good. Go ahead. Say hello to everybody. See, he knows. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah. <laughs> you see, they say Rottweiler is very fierce dog. He, he's not. Very sweet. Very, very sweet. <laughs> Actually, he's not that sweet to everybody. Just you here, he knows it. Even, even when I'm in the car, you know, and he saw somebody go too near, suddenly he, he growled at them. Yeah. But to you, my, he knows who's who, yes. Yeah. yeah. If, if I am with other stranger, he, he would always uh, growl, growl at them if they go too near. Yeah, but he, he, here he looked like he's swimming in the ocean of love. <laughs> Okay, go, go, go. Behind us. He say hello to everybody. Look at that. <laughs> kiss, kiss. Oh, God. A Rottweiler who kiss strangers. <laughs> you are strangers to him. He kiss, kiss you. Oh, yeah. Good boy, goody, good boy. Oh, yeah. He knows you like... He also he knows that you love him. Yes. He knows who's who. Yeah. Good? Lay down. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> good boy. Good boy. Stay there, huh, baby? I'm gonna work now. We work, okay? So are you okay? In my house, I know dogs and birds. <laughs> That's the boss in my life. I have like five, six attendants. You know? I mean, pets attendants. <laughs> I don't even have any attendants to claim. You know? Every time I need some document or some email, some anybody available? <laughs> Anyone there? Please help. <laughs> Anyone to drive my car? <laughs> you know? Anybody get the email, please? <laughs> it's urgent. <laughs> yeah, my God. Because dogs, if I let them go out and in by themselves, you know, then the house will be muddy and dirty and everything. It's not that I mind, because the house is theirs. Yeah, actually, so I don't have anything. <laughs> I don't have house. Yeah, I don't have assistance. Cars are measured for dogs and size. <laughs> I am just a, you know. <laughs> by the way, you know, I could ride on their car. Oh, you love, love, choo choo. The tough guy who loves. Oh, okay, okay. Good, good, good. Good, honey. Can we work now? Okay, I don't mind if it's dirty, but it's for their sake, you know? Doesn't matter, bed, whatever, you know? Beds are there, sofas are dogs. <laughs> yeah. If you come in the house, you see all kinds of things, just dogs and birds, all dogs' bed and Dogs' bed are also their bed, yeah? Sofas are also dogs' sofa. And my bed is dogs' bed. Because <laughs> they don't want their bed. And the beds are occupied, sofa occupied. So one or two dog beds, are, you know, are free. <laughs> Have you ever tried to sit in a dog's bed to meditate? <laughs> Very comfy, <laughs> especially when you don't have anything else. <laughs> you appreciate it. Yeah, 
When winter is cold and you sit on the floor, you know, it's, it's cold and then the bed is round, you know. <laughs> you feel just your size, protected and warm. If they are muddy and dirty all day, you know, I don't feel it's very good for them. Yeah, not my dog. So we cannot just let them in and out, you know, any time, because they don't go out that long anyway. If they come out, like, two, three seconds, just to lay, you know, on the bush nearby, the nearest possible, <laughs> just to lift their leg the nearest, and then come back inside. <laughs> so what's the use anyway, you know? So we have to let them out, you know, yeah, four, five, six times a day, it depends. <laughs> he's shopping for love, my God. <laughs> I can't believe he's going with stranger like that. Yeah, even I can't believe it, you know, because if I go out, even in restaurant and all that, he won't eat anything. He just sit there and watch everybody, very stiff. And even the restaurant owner, you know? <laughs> no, no. I can't believe it. Affectionate Rottweiler. Have you ever heard of an affectionate Rottweiler? Oh. Yeah. I can't believe it. He's so loving here, you know? When I go out, he's not like this, huh? <laughs> So they have a little bit more time with me in the house, in the car, you know, wherever possible. Where were we? <laughs> huh? Huh? Yeah, the boss in my life. You're right. <laughs> New book. Not just the boss, but the bosses. <laughs> Not just one, but plenty. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, big. <laughs> Humans are bosses in different ways. Their ego makes so much trouble sometimes. If we don't have the ego, we are enlightened immediately. I mean, complete, full, perfect, immediately. No second uh, needed. Just the ego causes so much trouble. The ego collects so many garbage information, and then you cling on to that all the time. That's why when you're sitting, you're just thinking of what you learned today and what you heard today, yeah? And then you assimilate it and make it yours, and then it becomes your opinion. And the more opinion, the bigger the ego, yes, and become very opinionate, they call it, like the king. <laughs> Remember? <Yeah. laughs> the king who decides. <laughs> Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> okay. But uh, dogs and birds, they don't have ego so much, you know? Okay. You want to listen to some story? Mm. Yes. This is a Chinese historical story. China, before, had many enlightened masters huh? and saints. Yes. Not just before, maybe now also, just we don't know, huh? Some saints, they come out, you know, some saints, they don't. Huh? Some saints are destined to teach a lot of people, some just a couple. Hmm? Some don't really like to go out. I don't blame them. Knowing what they know, there's not much they should come out for, yeah? Hmm. It's a great sacrifice if they come out, in many ways, not just to come out and take the bad karma, anything like physical, emotional, mental. Okay, this is maybe the story of one of the saints. There was a lady in China who was very famous. Her name is Ma Chu. Anybody knows? Yeah. Yeah, okay. She's like a protector of the people, you know? They pray to her to protect them, yes. Okay, the thing is, how come all the Chinese people know about Ma Chu? I mean, at least most of them, or a whole lot of them. But not all of them are protected. You know, disasters still happen, you know. Things still happen in different way. Why is that? Can you tell me? Is Ma Chu no good? Huh? 
bad karma, right? You can't expect protection all the time, 24 hours, when you yourself are not deserving of the protection. That's what people don't know. Maybe they know, but they try to ignore it, yeah? Pushing it in any way they can. And then blaming, how come God doesn't help me? There is no God. Something like that. You heard it all the time already, right? Yeah. Always the people ask you, if there is a God, how come He, you know, He doesn't stop the suffering in the world? How come still disease? How come still war? It's all man made. And man don't listen to God. That's the problem. Hmm? Every Bible, every uh, scripture told us what to do, right? We just don't do it. And then we blame God. So, because humans do not listen to God, that's why, huh? I mean, to the wise advice, to the universal law. For example, if we live in America, huh? Oh, we have to abide by American law. We like it or not, we must. Yeah. Especially the one that protects the interest of everybody else. Because if we don't abide by that law, then what happens? We go to jail, yes. Or we even get killed, die also, yeah? In the old time it's quicker to die than nowadays, yeah? Nowadays there are many countries more lenient, maybe you take time to go to court, stay in jail for a while, and maybe get a lawyer, and then uh, sometime if you have money, you can buy your life too. It depends on country, yeah? But in the old time, the king say one word, that's it, you know? Your head went on vacation somewhere else. You know already. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Forever. <laughs> it's not that funny if your head gone to vacation. <laughs> But never mind, we're just talking about those ridiculous times, yeah? But it's not a funny law, is it? Okay. For example, like that, in the world, eh? just a small country even, have many laws that you have to abide by, otherwise you'll be in trouble, yeah? Therefore, in the universe, there are also universal law, and if you don't listen to it, you'll be in trouble also, yeah? So here, we have Machu, they are protection that people believe in. Okay, maybe Machu still protects people. Of course, when she was alive, she was a protector, yeah? Like when Jesus was alive or Buddha was alive, whatever you pray, mostly will come true, provided you are really also in tune somehow with the universal law, hmm? or not so grave the offense, or you promise not to do it again and turn your life around, yeah? Like you have been eating meat and drinking and drugging, but now you say, okay, no more, I change. Yes, forgive me, I'm going to change, okay? Instead of go north, you go south, then you will see the South Palace. So, and then after that, of course, every time you pray to Buddha or Jesus, yeah, miracles will happen all the time. Mm. Because you are in their direction, yes, in the direction of benevolence and miracles, yes. We are also the miracles. Yeah. If we know how to tap into this miraculous power within ourselves, then we are in full power, empowered with all miracles and all the a uh, mighty power that we can imagine of. Even if you are vegan or vegetarian, practice quantum method, but still cannot get full power of the universe. Why? Ego again. <laughs> New karma. Sincerity. Ego again. <laughs> Meditate more. Ego again. <laughs> The problem with the ego is that he thinks he knows everything. So you won't be surprised, or many people, you know, like, all the things that they should not do, they still do it. And they don't think that it's the thing they should not do. Just habit, they forgot also. Yeah? Habit, forgot. 
You see, like when you go on the airplane, they tell you to buckle your safety belt. Huh? You think the air stewardess was so controlling or something? <laughs> Every time you step on the airplane, please uh, buckle your belt. And if you don't, she will come and tell you. Now, you think the stewardess is so bad? Is she controlling her husband and become a habit or something? <laughs> no, it's for your safety, huh? But you can see some people don't, still don't do it, you know? Like the light on, like buckle your belt, and they still try to open it and go to the bathroom and something. <laughs> or try to go next door and talk to a new girlfriend or just know from the ticket counter or something. <laughs> yeah. And then the stewardess, of course, push him back into the chair. And of course, he doesn't feel good and hurt the ego, you know? Yes. You told me what to do? <laughs> <laughs> me? <laughs> For example. But, you know, this is the thing about ego, yeah? That is a problem. So even though we learn with an enlightened master, and we are enlightened a little bit, <laughs> or a lot, <laughs> still our habit, our ego, our habit is from bad karma. Yeah, that's what it is, yes. It was still dragging us around. So we are not the boss by ourselves. We are not the master. That is the problem. So when somebody else say, I am the supreme master, huh? <laughs> you, master? I thought I am the master. <laughs> you know, we are not the master. That is the problem. Even if we are the king of the whole nation, like the king that I told you last story, yeah? He is not the master of himself. Yes. He is the, the slave yeah, of his ego, hmm? of his controlling uh, tendency or habit, yes, a craving. Yes. He is not free. See what I mean? He still competes. He's a slave for competition, yes for this kind of name and profit in the world. Power, you know, power and money, yes. That's all they talk about, mostly. Mm. Therefore, even if we are already enlightened somehow, yeah, or some degree at the time of initiation and continue every day, we're still struggling, yes, to battle with the ego in order to get to the source of all intelligence of all goodness, and of all purity, and all smoothness, peace, yes? No struggling, no competition in there, no feeling of the I important anymore. You understand what I mean? Yes. So it is like that in this world. Even then, at least we have protection for sure. Huh? Like if we study with Jesus when he was alive, and then every time we pray to him, he will, Protects, yes, but we also have to go along with his instruction. So you see, that's why we cannot uh, get uh, complete enlightenment so quick. Some people quicker, maybe because less ego. Less bad karma also in the past. I mean, less ego in this lifetime also. Also the background maybe have helped. Yeah, but that's also karma, you see? In the past lives, you have sown some good karma, yeah? And then so in this lifetime, your life is less obstructed and you are less associated with some people who have bad influence on you, yeah? Okay. So you growing up with all good influence, yeah? And your life is smooth and you don't learn bad habits from people and you don't learn to be obstinate or you don't learn to have too many garbage opinions and stuff, yeah? So when you uh, meet a master, you enlighten so quick, yeah? and faster than the other people. That's what it is about karma and ego also, yes. So it's all boiled down to karma, yeah? A background or whatever ground <laughs> is all boiled down to karma that we have. Clear our road or not clear our road before we're born even. That's why all the scriptures say that we have the sin from the ancestors. Original sin. Original sin, that's our. Ancestor is also we, who else is there? <laughs> Sometimes we're born again, again, and again, eh? and we carry it with us, yes. Sometimes the same grandma or something reborn back into the family as a grandson or granddaughter, yeah, it happens. 
Now. Okay, let's go to China. Huh? Okay, Ma Chu. She's very famous as a protector for the people. Hmm? That was a long time ago. That's in the many dynasty ago. Hmm. And she's a daughter of a mayor in a small town. One year, her father was in charge of building a wall uh, for the city. You know, even though he's a mayor, but he probably is a constructor or something like that, you know? So he was awarded this project to build the wall for that city. And he hoped to gain a little bit more than what he uh, invested. So he pushed people to work very hard, day and night. Didn't let them rest. He called them together, you know, his subjects, and say, you know, winter is coming. So the city wall has to be completed before then. You are only to rest before the sunrise, before they didn't have a clock. So they have a rooster that crow in the morning. And you say, that period before the rooster crow, you can rest. That means not much, like uh, an hour or maybe two hours, something like that. The people were very, very upset. And they said to themselves, oh, this is already the fall. How can we ever finish uh, to build the wall before winter? So they chose a person as their uh, spokesperson to come to talk to the mayor about this. So this representative came to tell the mayor like this, you know, this summer we have a drought already. If uh, the people are not allowed to harvest the crops uh, that are left over, we're going to starve in winter, in any case. That means people cannot build a wall now at the same time as harvesting. So the mayor say, I have no time to listen to your nonsense. My order must be follow through. Same. <laughs> Decider for the fate of the people, tell people what to do. And not only did he not listen to this representative of the people, he even ordered the guard to flog him a hundred times for big mouth. That's what I said. But he's only representing the people. Yeah, he only told the mayor what the people requested him to tell. So he's like an ambassador. Yeah, a messenger even. So why beat him up? See what I mean? So he's a bad guy, huh? The bad man. In the old time, it's like that. Uh, the local God, they are truly God. <laughs> no wonder people don't believe in God. <laughs> you know, too busy fighting this kind of small God. Not only he is pushing people to work like this and beat up their representatives, he also control the market, even, yes. Like uh, the governor of uh, that region sent uh, supplies, like cereals and salt, those basic necessities. The mayor of this town take them all and sold them back in the black market. Yeah, because if he took them all, then that means short supply outside. When it's short, people have to pay anything, he asks. Therefore, he pocketed a lot of money as well. Not only he wanted to earn extra from the city wall building project, he also sold the basic supply to the people with extra money like that. So he cannot be a good boy, huh? Bad boy, bad boy. So Ma Chu, unfortunately, was the daughter of this man. Yes, when she knew about all this, she tried to intervene and say, Father, please don't do this. Yes, you must give people more time to rest. Yes. What, what would the father say? I give you a hint, like the king. Like the, the king last time. Huh? <laughs> the sticky nose king. Shut up or I put you in jail. That's what it is. My God. No, he say, I, I will lock you in your room. It's the same stuff. <laughs> same stuff. So, 
You can see from her attitude that she's not an ordinary girl. Yes. And here in the story, it is said that uh, uh, when she was a child already, she was very, very special. She could uh, even uh, imitate all the animals and the birds, the languages, yes. You know, and do exactly like they do, talk like them. Mm. She could even jump very high above the walls. She could even do like, uh, you know, like we are surfing nowadays and all that stuff, yes. And she could climb trees. Oh, that I can too. <laughs> fruit trees, yes. When I was young, I used to climb fruit trees because I love fruit. When you climb fruit trees to get the fruits for yourself, you can eat as much as you want, and it's cheaper. <laughs> yeah, now that's the way it is. And if you have to uh, get it from the owner, then it, there is a certain limit. But if you can climb, you take what you want. That's the condition of the gardeners, you know, in my hometown. <laughs> when I was young and when I was a student, eh? mm. so we always go to the garden, climb the tree, get the fruit ourselves. Cheaper, of course. Uh, also, he knows we're students, you know, we don't have much money, we kids. And he also knows that he has a lot of fruit and he cannot manage them all anyways. Might as well let the kids have them and have some money better than they're falling down and rotten. You know, and he has to go pick them up or pay some laborer to pick them up. Yes. And by the time he pays laborer to pick up the fruit and sell them to the kids, it's, it's even sometimes more expensive than let the kids have a little bit extra by themselves. How much can the kids carry anyway? <laughs> we don't have much, you know, just some pockets here and there, you know? <laughs> and the, the most is we put in our, you know, school bag. Yeah, it's all he also okay. We go up, eat our field, and put some in our school bags and go home. Mm. We were also honest, you know. We show it to him and he said, okay, then we go. Yes. <laughs> so now, uh, this girl could do all this. Mm. Uh, she was a very quiet girl, and she was very uh, stealthy, you know, very fast. That somebody thought that she could be in several places at the same time. Maybe she has been in several places at the same time. Just people didn't know about it, you know? This concept of being in several places at the same time is very foreign to people, even now. Yeah? They think only Buddha can do that. Only Jesus can do that, even if they have believed Jesus at all, you know? Or as a couple of saying, you can count on the fingers, mm -hmm. you know? They don't think that it's uh, anybody else contemporary, for example, this time, can do that, yes? So we were not surprised to read that in her time, uh, even though they thought she could have been, it looked like she could have been in several places at the same time, but they thought maybe she's just too quick. Too stealthy, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I said, yeah. So people say that she gave the impression of being in several places at the same time. But maybe she did not give the impression, <laughs> my love. Maybe she did really appear in different places at the same time, yes. So Machu was very disturbed and feeling pain when she saw that her people in the town were dying because of exhaustion and hunger. She decided to do something about it. So, you see, her father said that between the rooster crow and the sunrise, during that time they could rest, remember? Mm. Mm. That is a very short period because the rooster crow and then the sunrise almost very quick afterward. Yes. So now one day she climbed off the tree and she imitated the sound of the rooster <laughs> before midnight. So everybody <laughs> went to sleep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then she climbed here and there and keep crowing like roosters. And then soon all the roosters in the town crowing all together. Yeah. So the people Can sleep. took a rest. Yes. Could go to sleep. Okay. <laughs> Uh, even though it was midnight, the guards, hearing the sounds of the rooster, let people go, 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 because he also knows there's a very short time for them to sleep. He was thinking, maybe his watch is wrong, you know? 
it went on and on and on like this for a while, a yeah? couple of weeks. And then her father noticed that the work, ah, something wrong. Yes. <laughs> he noticed that the work on the city wall was somehow suddenly delayed, always behind the schedule that he decided. <laughs> Remember, yeah? So <laughs> he questioned the gods, and uh, the gods said to him, We follow your order very strictly. We haven't done anything wrong. Mm. We let the people go when the rooster crow and wake them up when the sun rises. <laughs> so <laughs> it's true. Huh? So that night, the mayor, the father of Machu, Mr. Ma. <laughs> <laughs> He stay up all night and, you know, <laughs> spy on people. At midnight, again, he heard the rooster crow from the roof of his house. <laughs> <laughs> and then he heard another one from the neighbor roof. Yeah, mostly rooster, not on the roof. How come they heard so many rooster on the roof? So then he followed, and then he saw what's going on. Huh? He know. In the morning, because Matsu keep jumping from one roof to another to wake up the whole town's rooster, so he spent half of the night, you know, doing that. So when she came back into the room early in the morning, she saw father sitting there, <laughs> the controller. Oh my God! So. He grabbed her in his arm and said, You have destroyed my chance of getting mucho dinero. <laughs> you have to pay for it. Oh, my God. So he tied her onto the post and went to get the whip to whip her. But when he came back, she disappeared. Ah, I like that. <laughs> Happy ending. So the mayor and his guards search everywhere but cannot find her. Machu was fleeing and fleeing and fleeing, run, run, run very fast and run away from her father. I don't know how she could open the rope properly. She was clever or she has a knife in her pocket, who knows, yeah. Maybe he didn't think she could do that, you know. So Machu, while fleeing for her life from the punishment of her father, she met an immortal who taught her the art of immortality and magic. You know what it is already, yeah. Everything <laughs> uh, happened that doesn't happen to them, they call it magic. So she has learned the art of magic, yes, and immortality, yes. In the beginning they say like that. Anything like what we do, they think is... Uh, for immortality, you know. Of course, because we say for eternal life, you know. <laughs> we learn this for eternal life. So in the old time, they also say like that. They learn this and they live forever, yes. But uh, all the master die also, you know, <laughs> <laughs> including Lao Tzu and all the immortals people. The immortal, they call him. What they mean was don't die in spirit, yeah? but the body, you know, what for we keep it? It will be rotten one day, yeah? Even if we live to a thousand years, oh, forget it, eh? forget it. Also, who likes to live here very long anyway, right? Uh, yesterday, the Chinese, you know, <laughs> hoping that I live here forever, I said, no, no, thank you, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, what for? Yeah? <laughs> I live as long as, you know, I could, yes? Not like I want to die tomorrow or something, but I live as long as necessary. As long as I can do something for this world, to some extent, according to their karma and also their willingness to change, yes? If not, then either I live here or not, don't matter. So she learned uh, with uh, this immortal, and after her apprenticeship, she returned to her town. And then uh, people saw her flying up from the bridge in front of a crowd of people. She flew up into the sky. So after that, people named that bridge the Immortal Bridge in honor of her courage and uh, love for the people. 
I guess she came back, yeah, and uh, showed the people that she's still there. But probably not in the flesh, huh? Yes. Or maybe in the flesh. But people don't understand all this anyway. They think, oh, she flies. Like resurrection, you know? Yeah. Okay, and that is the story of Ma Chu, the great lady of China. Good story. Good story. Yeah. You see, that's why people always complain, how come good person always get into trouble, you know, or die young, and bad people prosper and seem like stay forever. But it's not so, it's not so. It only seems so because of the time conception of this world and the space limitation of this earth. Yeah. Sometimes time is really something nuisance. Even such a free, few free soul already still have to limit ourselves to the imprisonment of all kind of things in this world. Just like you also, no? so don't complain that you're not free. Like you have to go to work on what time, what time. If not, you get fired, you know, sometime like that. So we have to somehow limit ourselves in this world a lot, yes, enlighten or not, yes. It just at least when we are enlightened, we know okay we have to do it. We do it, you know. We don't complain too much, yes, and we try to do the best, yes, because we have a good conscience, <laughs> not because we have to sometimes. So we don't try to trick out or do something else to free ourselves. Just like Jesus, he has to go on the cross, he knows it, but he still goes. You understand me? Yeah, all right. Okay, that was a long story, huh? <laughs> good story, huh? Yes, yes. Chinese have a lot of good stories. Vietnam have a lot of good stories. But I told many Vietnamese stories already, I think, uh, long ago, huh? Yeah. And uh, the Western. Also, I have some story. The Muslim have a lot of story. The Devish people have a lot of story. For parable, you know, Jesus also told many story. In Hinduism, there are many legends. Yes. Sikhism, many legends. I love these stories, so I collect them and read them to you uh, with my explanation. But you like it, huh? Yes. Because if I read the story, it's only Maybe two minutes, yeah. <laughs> and nothing more. I finished, you know, one or two pages. That's it. Yes. Okay. Right. I love you. Yes. My house more, you know. Yeah. But better than nothing, no? Yeah. <laughs> thank you for the song last night. Huh? And what did I do that you thank me so much in such a touching? Song. I haven't done anything to you. No, you did many things. Just give you initiation, that's it, uh, because you came. That's enough, master. <laughs> <laughs> that's more than enough. Yeah. Right. But it's yours, yeah? I just help to awaken you, the real you inside. I don't do nothing else. Hmm? And if you come here, of course, I try to take care of you, you know, mentally, explain to you things so that your mind don't bother you and let you meditate. That's all. Yeah, in Vietnam, we have a long range of mountains, from the north to the south, you know, all the whole range of it. Separate other countries in Vietnam, yeah. We call it Long, long Mountain, hmm. Trường Sơn. Difficult, but somebody claim over it and go to other country, you know? Yeah, of course. <laughs> we can do anything, except we claim over our ego. <laughs> that is something amazing, huh? Yeah. Amazing. People suffer so much, so much. It's because they don't know they're so great. They're just clinging to their little knowledge and little tradition, however bad or good, a little leftover, digested and munched, you know, kind of uh, hand out here and there, you know, the little knowledge of the world, and then they cling on to it. And they left the whole big treasure wisdom 
untouched, and they suffer so much, so much. It pains me to even think about how can a human degrade into such a stage of suffering Wow, having a great power to move mountain and dry the ocean inside themselves all the time, 24 hours, ever since they're born until the time that they close their eyes to leave the breath. It is amazing how the king of illusion could cheat people into such a tremendous suffering and sorrow. That's why I, I wish I could do more, you know? Saving the planet? Yeah, I hope I can. It's just trying. <laughs> trying with all your help. So I have to thank you, all of you. Anyone who even go out and give out one flyer, I thank you. Because that one flyer may become ten, who knows, and may become one hundred. If that person who receives it is sincere and believe in what you believe, he will copy it. He might give it to a thousand, hundred, who knows? And maybe you can save the planet for your children, huh? For me, truly, I couldn't care less. I couldn't care less if I go tomorrow. I hope really one day that we save the world. <laughs> I have some positive news that just happened today. Yeah? Yeah. Right after the celebration finished last night, yeah. um, I went to check the news, yeah. and the head of sustainability at the British National Health Service yeah. had submitted a proposal to reduce emissions by eliminating all meat from all British National Health Service hospitals. Wow. Oh. That was a good, good news. There was another one a couple days ago where the head of Germany's Environmental Protection Agency also recommended everybody reduce their meat to pre-war yes. levels in order to, to reduce emissions. Well, and not just reduce, just eliminate it. Yeah. <laughs> if you can eat it four days a week, why not just eat the whole week? Anyway, it's worth a sacrifice, even if you call that a sacrifice. All you do is just exchange that piece of meat for everything else that you treasure, mm -hmm. including your children, your planet, yes, your health, mm -hmm. the air that you breathe, the water that you drink, the car that you even can continue to drive for a while until we change it, mm -hmm. you know? Because if we eliminate animal livestock rising, mm -hmm. then all the methane, the major cause of global warming will be gone. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we have time to eliminate the leftover of the CO2. Yeah. And also nature will be healthy and absorb it all again. Mm -hmm. Not to talk about karma, spiritual, or moral standard, nothing. Physically speaking, it is like that. Mm -hmm. Scientifically, just no meat, no heat. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very simple, yes. Okay, last time I told you when I read the news that the European Parliament admit that meat is the yes. worst cause of global warming mm -hmm. and that they're going to consider like eliminate the subsidies for meat people. Mm -hmm. I was jumping and crying and laughing <laughs> all by myself in no. my house. No. No. I was working, you know, with the news, and I saw that. I was jumping and laughing and crying. I thank everybody, whoever. <laughs> and I was crying and laughing, you know, very loud. And my dogs were asking me, what's wrong? They were crying with me too. They were whining. <laughs> A whole group of them surrounding me, you know, and crying. So I had to tell, no, no, don't worry, I'm happy, I'm happy. <laughs> Look at me, I'm happy. <laughs> no problem, no problem. <laughs> Good that you told me here. If, if I read it at home, I would do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe who do you mean? Oh, very worried. <laughs> yeah, the, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has also um, proposed to eliminate uh, emissions from uh, agriculture, yes. methane emissions. Yes. And they're also requiring large pig farmers to um, write letters of writing about their emissions or else face a $25,000 fine. Oh, So wow. it's getting there. Getting there. Please be quick. <laughs> Please be quick before it's too late. I mean, the sooner the better, you know? Thank you for the news anyway. Because uh, even if it doesn't affect you, it affects millions of other people. Every day, 
Even, for example, Bangladesh, you know, every six minutes when I'm sitting here laughing with you, one house gone from their life. The house that they treasure, that they have memories, and the children and grandchildren are going to grow up in it. It's not just a nobody house. It is something in there. It's a history of a human's lifetime of work and emotion and love and family ties, you know? It's not just a number, like one house, and then one hour, 11 house. And keep counting like that. Even if it doesn't concern us, how can we sit here and eat meat and then everybody else die for that little piece of meat that we eat? And then we don't even need to eat it. You won't die. You will only be more healthy, healthier, happier. And you can save the whole human race and animals as well. Every day up to 270 species are erased every day. Nobody care or what. I mean, wait until it becomes our turn, then we say, oh, it's really urgent or what? No, we should not wait. Everybody else's disaster should be our disaster. Everybody else's house should be like our house. And when it's damaged, it should pain us just the same, like if we lose it. And their lives lost also. Their life saving is lost. And then we come out and they become homeless and become like a beggar, have to, to rely on hand out to live. You know, there's more, no more dignity for them. They are hard-working people that have home before. And because of the meat diet, everybody is losing their home in many different countries. Forty nations sinking or sunk already. Small nations. Maybe small, but it's a nation, no? Yes. I mean, how small is small? Monaco, like uh, five square kilometers? Yeah? How small is Vatican? Huh? One square mile, right? Okay? How small can an island be? Many islands bigger than that already sunk beneath the sea. Nobody care because we don't live there. We don't see anything. Oh, they speak Chinese, I don't understand. Oh, they speak uh, Kiribati or whatever, we don't understand. Not possible. If we are human, we must have a heart. Otherwise, we are not human. We are like stone. Yeah? Even stone have heart if they can show it. So it's about time people should live like a human. Huh? If we call ourselves human, we have to live a humane life. No? Even before our house collapses, we have to consider other people's house and stop the cause of it. We can do it, not like we cannot. We have the mean to. Especially the people who have house and live in so-called civilized society, they have money. Vegetable is even cheaper than meat, for God's sake. No, it's not, sorry. Because the subsidy is for meat, because if they don't subsidize the meat industry, the hamburger will cost like $30. Instead, it costs only 99 cents. So everybody eat because it's cheap also. You see what I mean? Yes. And everybody else who eat meat or don't eat meat has to subsidize for that money, and then they buy it, they think it's cheap. They are eating their own money too. See what I mean? It's all cheating, it's all illusion. It's nothing as real as it looks. So instead of subsidize the meat industry, must subsidize organic, vegan, organic farming. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I get very emotional when I talk about this. <laughs> I get a little bit passionate, huh? Yes. I can talk about that forever. But you know, but you cannot blame the people, huh? Please, don't think they are bad people. It's not like that. Just they don't know. Truly, not everybody knows about meat stuff. And it's already made uh, just a piece like chocolate, even pepper and everything ready. All you do is just microwave and you eat it. You can't even have time to think. Yeah? People are also busy, you know? So it's all in the hands of the lawmaker and us who have to go out and inform people as much as we can. But you see, how many people can we inform with flyers and all that, you know? Even with the Supreme Master television, some people don't have TV. Some remote area, they don't have TV. Or they don't have the mean for computer. Or if they have computer, it's too slow or something. They can't get it. It's all kind of thing I can never take care of, you know, I'm telling you. I did everything I can, but still somewhere is lacking something, you know? That they couldn't get it. They couldn't get the TV, the news. You see what I mean? So... You cannot blame the people. They don't know. 
just one lead to another, and they've been, uh, you know, indoctrinated into eating meat and drinking milk. Otherwise, they don't have enough muscle, protein, and all that. People are poor people. You know, nobody knows because everybody believes what the experts say, né? and the experts, they lobby and the government to say that. And the government, let's face it, the government also did not know. I'm telling you the truth. It's not like every uh, person sitting in the government office and know everything about nutrition and milk. And they don't know also. So if the meat industry lobbies some of the people in the government and uh, that people say, this meat is good, 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 and everybody, okay, good, good, good. Protein, you know. Meat eating not only is detrimental to our health, it is the cause for us that we cannot get in touch with our true self also. You see, that's why most people, sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. <laughs> they don't know why. Yeah, sometimes when their stomachs are empty and they're sincere or they're in sorrow, they're more connected with the inside. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and when their time is smooth and they drink and eat, they don't know anything anymore. So they disconnect again. You see, even the people who are not practice the Kuan Yin method, they're connected now and again with the divine. Therefore, now and again, they can sustain their life on this planet and then continue like that. That's why they don't live very well, but they do live. You see what I mean? Like a person who is sick, but not completely dead, still can move around, but not completely well. That's like that. See? So the person who completely connects with himself and practice that connection more and more every day, that he has more abundance, yes, more health, yes, more clarity in the head, more wisdom, more compassion, which is himself. Compassion is not from heaven. Compassion is not from the vegetarian diet. Compassion is inherent within all of us. The vegetarian diet is just a proof of it, that you have compassion, that you don't want to eat others. Do you understand me? Yes. 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 But to some people, they just cover this compassion. They probably know it somehow, but they just don't have time to think about it. Too busy, too busy. Everybody has to work to earn more money, to have a bigger car, a better TV and everything, you know? The neighbor has that, we don't have this. <laughs> it's just like the whole society trend that is driven us downhill. So now the trend must change, that's all. Somewhere somebody has to change it, has to take up the courage to lead everybody to change it. And the government have this power. It's just that now they begin to know. I'm so happy. I never blame the government. I never blame the people in my heart. I just feel very sad and very painful that I cannot tell everybody. And I'm not in a position to even influence the government or anything. I'm very sad, that's all. I never blame anyone because I know they've just been cheated out of their true intention, their true knowledge. They have been really thumbed down, you know? By all the power of this physical, depressing world, you know, by the web of illusion that casts over their mind and their soul and their body, make them work day and night, exhausted, and they can't even think of anything. And then the sickness comes because they push meat in their face, make them eat it since they were born, and so on and so forth. So when they grow up, they're already so depleted of all the, you know, the goodness, all the intelligent. If they haven't been eating meat all this generation and time, they would have had more intelligence. We would have been catch up with all the other planets in the universe. We would have had UFO already. We would have visited Mars in person, Jupiter, Pluto. For example, far, far away, Venus, you know, all that, without worrying about anything. And we would have more abundance in everybody's life. The children, we have all the education necessary. Some of the benefits of a vegetarian diet lowers blood pressure, lowers cholesterol levels, reduces type 2 diabetes, prevents stroke conditions, reverses atherosclerosis, reduces heart disease risk 50%, reduces heart surgery risk 80%, prevents many forms of cancer, 
stronger immune system, increases life expectancy up to 15 years, higher IQ, saves 70% of the total cost of 40 trillion US dollars for reducing global warming, uses 4.5 times less land to grow food, conserves up to 70% clean water, saves 80% of the cleared Amazonian rainforest from animal grazing, a solution for world hunger. Free up 3.4 billion hectares of land. Free up 760 million tons of grain every year. Half the world's grain supply. Consumes one-third fossil fuels of those used for meat production. Reduces pollution from untreated animal waste. Maintains cleaner air. Saves 4.5 tons of emissions per U.S. household per year. Stop 80% of global warming. Plus more. No children would ever have to go barefoot hungry to the school, or even not go to school. Barefoot hungry don't go to the school. This is a shame, really a shame, for the human race to let it happen to some corner of the world that some children look like a skeleton, look like hell. Do you understand me? Yes. yes. So we, as a whole human race, is responsible. Nobody is free of guilt, including myself. I always blame myself for not working enough and don't have enough means to do it. I Sometimes I cry alone. I feel frustrated. And the planet is going. And I just feel like I can't do anything. I know you're helping me, but but you also sacrifice a lot already, and you have your family, and and you also have to struggle with your own, you know, problem. Yes, your own inherent, you know, obstruction, and your sometimes family obstruction, society obstruction. Everybody is having a problem already, and despite that. And you're trying hard to be good and to be an example of an enlightened person and to help. I really appreciate it very much because I know how hard it is for you to live out there, you know, in the world. And that is the way we have our world. I know it's very hard on all of you, physically, mentally, emotionally, everything, all kind of trouble that is waiting, you know, to power on you. And all kind of trouble is already there that you could not even solve. And then other trouble already coming. Anything, anything at all. Even love in this world is a cheat. Now, how long can a man love you? Just make trouble and then leave sometime like that. Everything is a trouble for you. But uh, you already try very hard to help. But I myself cannot expect much more from you. I'm just very appreciative. I can never be proud of, of your praise for me. Because I never feel like I do enough. You know, as long as one person still suffer in this world and one animal still being slaughtered mercilessly, I don't sleep well. And I don't feel <laughs> like I've done enough. I'm feeling like I'm also responsible for the suffering in this world. Do you understand me? I feel it. I don't care who say what. <laughs> and because I feel it, because I was also there. You understand me? I was also born the way you were born. And I was also cheated the way you were cheated. Yeah? Therefore, I can love people. <laughs> I can love them all the time. <laughs> <laughs> because I know it's not their fault, believe me. It's not your fault. Whatever you do, I know it's not your fault at all. You are just a victim, 100% like that. You're born into this world is like hell. <laughs> For the children of God, you don't deserve this place. And I feel powerless. I do feel happy sometimes, a little change here and there, but it's, it's not enough to 
to make me proud or satisfied that I have done something that I could take credit of, that I'm happy that, okay, the world had changed. It changed a little bit, too slow. Wait until millions of people die already and then change. What's the use and children are hunger, dying every day, and women who have to go for miles to fetch just a bottle of water to bring home for their family and being raped and killed meanwhile on the road. That's what do we call a word? A human word? I call it hell. Excuse me. In one of the, my talk to you, I said this world is like half hell and there's some pure hell in some places. I don't have worse word to say. It. I'm sorry if I offend anybody. Just let it be. I don't care. Because it's the truth that I'm saying. It's too bad already, you know? It's passed beyond politeness. I cannot keep being polite when people are dying and suffering everywhere in the world, when children are having not even one bowl of rice to eat per day. We are all responsible. We cannot say we are not, every one of us. That's why even if we're doing something, or I do something, I don't feel it's good enough. You understand me? Yes. yes. And for whatever power I have, I feel so frustrated that it doesn't uh, go through sometimes. It goes too slow. I'm having positive hope, yeah? But meanwhile, humans, animals are suffering <laughs> in agony, you know? You know, live in hell. You know, in those slaughterhouse, you see the stop cruelty show. I can't even see it. I scream all the time. But I have to force myself to see it so that I force my mind to work, you know, for the people, for the planet, for the animals. But it cut my heart, you know, into pieces. But I have to see it. Even I know already I won't want to see it, but I have to see it. <laughs> Sometimes I cannot, but I force myself to look. This is what I call hell. There's no need to wait for purgatory anywhere else after you die. And then look at the people in some small villages who are in small number, whose name we could not even pronounce. And we don't even care if they have a name, if they have a life, if they look like us or not, if they have any emotion, any hope, any dream. We don't even care. That's why they let them die, you know, just for a piece of meat. This is the work of the king of the devil. Do you understand me? People are cast a spell upon to do kind of things that they don't even understand why. That's why I do what I can. I never blame people. We are one of them. It's not them. It's us. And we are all responsible. So even if you can help with something, I appreciate it very much. But don't feel proud, okay? Don't feel proud. Don't feel proud of what we're doing for the world. We don't do enough. That's my opinion. Yeah. I know you have problem. That's why you don't do enough also. Yeah? Because this the system is like that. It's already buying you hand and feet day and night. That sometimes you wonder if you could even breathe or you have time to even think. Are you alive or not? Even sometimes your body makes you feel like, oh my God, am I still here? I mean, how I continue to work next day again? If I have to, you know. The electric bill is catching up, the gas bill is coming, the house mortgage, the children's school fee, the car insurance, everything is binding you. You have to work. You have to. This is a system of the world. It's not very favorable. But it will take a long time to change if we want to change, but at least if we have compassion and we be vegan, that's all there is. No killing animals, no killing of men. Another day uh, when I heard that you're president, you know, this is political, but I don't give a damn. Uh, the other day when I heard that your president, you know, signed the bill to support abortion, 
I was thinking, how can it be? He saved a human in some place and then killed in another place, an innocent human. He cannot be supportive of that. I thought, I have to write him a letter, but I don't know if even he get to him. But I thought I have to say something, do something. I was thinking that. I was pondering alone, what am I to do? I cannot. I cannot do anything. I'm not even American. I'm honorary citizen. But I do thank the Americans, you know, so much. They give me those honors. Many of the keys for the cities, key, honorary citizen, even when I'm not there, I give it to the contact person. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have time to come. Only American governments do that. That's why I thanked them the other day. You know, they gave it to me before I gave it to the Twin Tower. It has nothing to do with that even. In some state, I don't give anything even. They just heard that I'm good. Okay, give her an honorary citizen. Yeah, like that. Or the key to the city. The mayors, many mayors and governors give me. And that's why many uh, talented people go there. And they do find opportunity and privilege. It's not like just a name and they go there and a uh, different. No, no. It's true like that. And uh, some people blame the American for draining the brain from their country, but it's not their fault. They're just welcoming people. They truly uh, humble the government of America. I mean, maybe they make mistakes, but that's a one or two people decide. It's not the whole American society. Do you understand me? It's not the whole American government. They are really good. I met many of the mayors and the governors. They're truly humble. You would think they are somebody very, you know, behaving like imperialists. No, no, no. They're very ordinary, very humble. They truly acknowledge you're good and all that. They invite me to some of the party, you know. And uh, uh, Bob Doyle, huh? He even came and talked. He was a big shot at that time. Yeah, he came around and talked to everybody. And he shook my hand also. Yeah, I didn't know who I was, actually. I also didn't know who he was. <laughs> uh, hello, hello, sir, how are you? And later they told me, Master, that's Bob Doyle. <laughs> I don't know much about politics, just my own business. I wasn't really thinking of go to find out who is doing what and what. So if they give me a award, I was surprised. I said, why? Okay. <laughs> oh, okay, why not? I go. <laughs> yeah, then I know those people, but otherwise I don't know them. Not like, okay, I go every day, see them more often, or make a lot of donations for their party. No, no, it's not like that. Not all about that. Like Hawaii. The mayor of Honolulu, he gave me an award from nowhere. I did not donate anything to that city at all. Yeah. And a statue, wow, alive, in a park, <laughs> in a Hawaii park. It's still there. I never see that park, but I saw it on photo. <laughs> now and again, Supreme Master Television, show it. okay, fine. There or not there, I don't care. But what I mean is how they honor me, you know? It's not like sometimes you give a lot of donation, then people thank you and do that. It's not that. I give a lot more to many other countries. I just do it because we are there and we sympathy, you know, like everybody else, just to show that we prefer peace, you see? And we prefer uh, empathy, you know, togetherness, helping each other. Just an example. I don't have that money as much as... You know, other people who can help. If I have more, of course, I will give more. But it's not about money that they do that. I did not uh, give the American people that much money to deserve all this honor, truly like that. They just honor good people, that's it. And that's a very, very touching tradition, you know? Yes. No wonder everybody goes to America. I'm just saying because it's fair, you know. It's just they are very compassionate folks. You know, they give a lot, a lot to charity out, outside America, and their rich people give a lot quietly also, or openly it depends. Yeah, they give a lot. Uh, it's just political. Sometimes it's unavoidable for this conflict, and sometimes because of bad karma in the past life or present life, that war broke out or somebody has to decide to do something. Not, not necessary that they like to do that. I'm sure President Bush, for example, wouldn't have liked to decide to go to war with any country. I'm sure he has his family, he knows what it is, yeah? He knows family, love and all. But it's just, what would you do? 
huh? if you're president in that situation. It takes two to tango, I say every time. Of course, it doesn't start that day. Huh? It starts another day or another time or somewhere else. That's why war is never good. Because if they don't hit you back today, they'll hit you another day. And as Buddha say, you know, uh, requiting hatred for hatred, hatred will never dissolve. You just have to use compassion. Yes. So, of course, the leaders of the world will learn this by mistakes or in time, and I hope it's not too late then. Yes. And by the train, if the news keep coming like this, maybe we have true peace on earth. Maybe we will have a vegan planet. I have this kind of feeling, but... I don't dare to have too high hope, but this feeling doesn't leave me, <laughs> you know? This positive feeling doesn't leave me. But just don't hope too high. Continue to work, okay, please, all of yes. you, all of you out there, and all of you who are not uh, our association member, please continue, do your work. Because everybody's effort really counts. Even one fly of information about meat diet and about the benefit of the vegetarian diet to help the planet does count. Even one word does count. One piece of information does count. Everybody help a little bit. Then the whole planet will change because of the collective consciousness of the positive direction, you see? Positive energy. Everybody wants the same thing. Everybody wants to save the planet. Everybody wants to sustain the globe, to keep this way of life, or even better, then the consciousness is huge, you know, the energy is very benevolent. And if they just do it, everybody just put out that piece of meat, change the lifestyle, very simple, very simple. It's not that difficult to leave that piece of meat, is it? No. no. They're just not used to it. And they just don't know why, that's why. If people truly know why, they would change. Yeah. They just don't know it and nobody informed them and they... They really are not bad people. Nobody is. They just misinformed. They just been misinformed. Even government. No government is bad or trying to, like, subsidize meat because of badness. No, 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 no. Uh, please don't ever think like that. They just are not informed or misinformed even. You understand? Misled. The whole planet has been misled. Imagine. And we are intelligent. How come we had been so misled? Can you imagine? Hmm? And the people are very good-hearted. That's why they give donations everywhere. They help each other. People are not bad. How can they continue to eat such a cruelty kind of meal? You see what I mean? This is a work of the devil. That's what we call Satan or the devil. Hmm? The Maya, king of illusion. He casts a web of ignorance, illusion on everybody and make them work day and night. And they are so exhausted with family, with job, with bills that they can't even think. Come home, what, what is it in the fridge? Is there something to eat? Yes, yes, and then just eat and then go to bed. Tomorrow, same day, same thing again. Especially then they're told that eat that piece of meat or else you will die. Of course they have to eat. From childhood, already you've been told like that. So you grow up with it, you see. Nobody has fought. It's the devil. We don't talk about devil. Buddha, Christ, <laughs> Allah, <laughs> Almighty, Most High, Omnipresence, Omnipotent, Omniscient, uh, Omni everything. Huh? God. Yeah? We remember that. Okay? Yeah, all right. European Parliament supports reducing meat to lower greenhouse gases. Reduce your meat consumption or stop eating meat totally. During discussions on greenhouse gas reduction goals, the Climate Committee of the European Parliament officially recognized livestock's contribution to global warming and recommended a reduction of subsidies to the livestock industry to curb methane. The European Parliament has adopted its own position on climate change as an institution and as a vice president. One of the proposals I have made is in line with your own, which is that we should eat far less meat 
because that's one of the major sources of greenhouse gases. Tout le monde sait bien, si on veut rendre notre planète soutenable, il va falloir réduire notre consommation de viande, ça on le sait bien. My name is Jan Solm, I'm a member of the European Parliament. Please, be veg, go green to save the planet. <笑>新年就说快乐就好了 我不晓得怎么命不好比较好心的<笑> 这样就等一下儿子孙子一大堆了然后又问题也一大堆了如果那个男孩子有工作有那个忠信还算你好命如果他没有的话哎呀小孩照顾不完然后他自由自在等一下又去找别的女孩子又比方说讲更年轻又心
，这个又很那个体贴啊，哎，真的头痛。<笑>怎么办呢？啊，酒里面师傅帮忙。<笑>好了好了 ，OK， 算、啊、师傅没事开，算<笑>他没事开，他有帮你一个忙啊，你就亮一下灯。哦 ，OK， 我选这个。<笑>等一下，夫妻不好也都是师傅了，怪师傅啊。然后 ，OK， 如果选好一点的话 ，OK， 那夫妻不错。等一下，生下儿子就来，不能教儿子，他、哦、头痛。那、啊、就这样，还有九师傅帮忙。<笑> OK，OK，、OK, OK, 也许是我帮忙，这个儿子好一点，又生出来一个，<笑>就是这样子，问题解决不了了。一天到晚哈，然后又一次，等一下孙子又出来，啊，又又再请师傅帮忙。师傅啊，我那个儿子的那个儿子啊，真的很难教，拜托。<笑>告诉你啊，我告诉你啊，难怪那个观音菩萨有天手天眼嘛，他一眼一手照顾不了。那么多儿子、孙子，嗯 ，OK， 就是这样子，啊，女孩子是最麻烦的，心软嘛，啊，心比较单纯，嗯、啊，又嗯、呃、高兴嘛，啊，呃、啊，我只小啊，啊，然后当然在积极工作，也是工作那个赚钱也不不会比男孩子多的，啊，一样的那个工作。还是女孩子比较少，少那个钱呢、啊，嗯，因为他们认为我们女孩子问题多，呵呵啊，那个不晓得能留多久嘛，啊，等一下一个帅帅的男孩子来的，就老板没有那个秘书了、啊、<笑> ，OK， 好，算他结婚 ，OK， 没关系，还是继续工作，等一下怀孕。哦、oh, ，又没有秘书了。<笑> OK， 好，那算他有，就啊，生出来，然后还照顾一回，还要再回来工作，是有人照顾他的小孩，然后他还继续当秘书，没关系。等一下，他的小孩长大结婚，那个生出来小孩，他又没有秘书了，<笑>因为那个啊，阿妈啊，阿妈要照顾孙子。而且阿妈很爱孙子。好，这个财玄女哈，她也是这样子活下去的。既然结婚，然后那个先生也不怎么爱她，不过这样子还可以生出来个男孩子呢。有<笑>了<笑>生了啊！哎，有一天，啊，去买菜的时候碰到一个那个算命的人哈。那个算命的人看他一眼就说：“你哈、哦，这个短命哦，你那个儿子也会短命哦，是你你会不会紧张啊？”“紧张。”“嗯。<笑>”“不过他不紧张，他听了以后，他回去就找名师了哈。听说去学什么观音法门了、啊，然后回去认真打坐。”他在那边修那个呃什么长生不老那个法门呐、啊，大家都这样在在中国这样讲了、啊、哈，嗯，就是跟我们那个法门一样，就叫长生不老就对了，没永久不死那种了啊，嗯，呃，几年以后啊，他突然间真的不老了，啊，他突然间那个老的那个过程，那都停着，一直说，他四十岁看起来怎么样？还是继续看这样，好几年以后还是这样，跟你们那个样子。后来他们两个没死，不死了，然后他就他就等他的儿子长大了哈，自己已经要结婚出去，自己有自己的家了
，啊，他就跑到一个山上哈，盖一个草庵，啊，在那边继续修行。嗯，在他那个修行的进步的当中，嗯，他以后就可以睡在水上哈，就不觉得冷了。很多西藏的人也是这样，所以，因为，藏西藏的人哈，他们走路的很久嘛，才有一户家。像喜马拉雅，不是说每个地方都有房子啊。我们有时候连台湾的是大陆，如果走路远一点哈，以前都没有车子跑那么快，所以走路哈，走有时候几个礼拜才才到另外一个村去啊啊，而且以前呢，人数更小嘛。又不好联络啊 ，OK， 所以他们随便呢，呃，走路的时候如果不累了，在哪里晚上啊就躺在水那边睡觉，就是不过他们要就穿那个衣服嘛，有没有？嗯，他们就穿那个温暖那些衣服嘛，啊，然后就这样子就躺在水上睡了，嗯，就不会冷。我有看几本书也是这样这么说，我有问那些西藏，他们也是这样这么说。真的睡这样子，嗯，不过你累的时候，你随便躺下来就睡了嘛。<笑>能不能相信走路好几天啊？没有新鲜的东西吃啊。然后路那边又不是说像我们那边那么水泥路或是很平的路，而要爬山过河那种。以前呢、啊，又古代的时候，呃，山路又更复杂，嗯、啊。所以当然在西藏啊，你累你就睡了嘛，哈、啊，啊起来就再走了，哎，就这样子就不会怎么样，嗯，而且一起睡了。他们在西藏哈、啊，不管男女了，如果有一个有一个屋顶或是有一个房子，他们就一起起起来睡，这样比较保温呐、啊。嗯，不不是没有那种，不是说为男女的什么概念的，不是，就保温，所以他们混在一起睡的，这样子比较温暖。在水上也是这样的挤在一起，动物它们也是这样那么聪明的啊！晚上冷了，它们就挤在一起睡觉，自己保温。嗯。OK， 他后来哈，他有水到那个意思说，他居那个水里面也不会不会湿的啊。然后他可以同时出现在很多的地方，这个都是传说嘛。OK， 有一次哈，他走路的时候看到两位男孩子在那边呢，呃，跟他的那个爸爸，他们走那种马车有没有啊？然后那个马车被倒下来，嗯，那个爸爸又又病啊，那个玄女啊，他就听他们两位一起说哈，哦，现在那个沙雪那么多啊，我们被水挡啊，如果不能带爸爸那个到医生。在太阳沙山以前呢、啊，他一定会死的啊！那、哦、讲，听说这样讲，他就马上用他的手哈、啊，指在那个水啊，这个水都会融掉啊，所以他们两位都可以带他爸爸去看医生，嗯，在催那部车，嗯。另外一次，这个是故事嘛哈、啊，就是也许那两位男孩子回去讲的啦。啊，不是玄女讲的，你们知道了嘛？哈，这个这个很熟悉嘛，哈，是不是？不是说我没听过的哈，类似的故事满满的哈。OK， 你知道哈？啊，不用解释很多也少的哈，太多讲不完了。这种故事算什么哈 ？OK， 哎，你们也可以全部写下来，变成一本书，嗯，大家一起一人一人一本。<笑>说不定可以印出来卖赚钱呢<笑>。No no， 就是这样子变成故事嘛，哈、啊，不然这个玄女她也不会讲的。也许这两位男孩子看到玄女化身嘛，啊，因为她可以同时出现很多地方啊，先住，急救，先住线，哎，就这样子，嗯。还有另外一次，呃，他说玄女哈、哦。看到一个男孩子跟女孩子，呃，一直边呢逃命啊，而且两个一直走，要逃命，嗯。后面他们有一对那个草寇追他们，啊
，所以他就拾好几块大的石头，那些石头就掉下来，把那个山的路，平常山路很小嘛，又很很深那个哈，他掉几几块大石头在那边挡挡路。啊，在他们两位夫妻或是那个男女都走过去的，他就把他挡掉了，所以曹寇没办法跟着他们。嗯，又另外一次，<笑>讲的很类似哈，嗯，又另外一次，这个会不会是玄女回去编故事出来，或是写写日记的？是不是玄女写的？啊啊？碰见他的人写啊，对，碰见他的人写的，一定是这样啊，嗯、啊，这跟全部故事都是你们讲的嘛。<笑>师傅从来没讲过我救谁、捉谁、救病谁，<笑>是吗？都是你们讲的，有的时候我也听听啊。你如果我不听，你就去找杨洋嘛，就去找那个同修跟他讲话。哎<笑>，就大家互相讲嘛，啊。那个这个跟那个讲那个说哇，这个你故事没算什么。我昨天，<笑>我昨天呢看到师傅那个这样那样，<笑>是不是这样？<笑>然后另外第三人都觉得哎呀，你们两个、哎、小事情，<笑>你不知道师傅常常来我家喝茶呢。<笑>啊，另外那个还说哎呀。我昨天呢，本来要开刀了，在那开刀开刀房跑出来回家的，没事的。<笑>那个癌症他突然间跑掉了。我比方说讲，都是你们讲的嘛哈，一个比一个厉害的哈。如果我们有一次没事干无聊哈，我们弄一个那个比赛的法会。<笑>要知道谁比较比较厉害的那个呃那个什么呃化身师傅的体验啊嗯是不会好玩哈嗯嗯太喜欢了<笑><笑>嗯 OK 现在继续说继继续看那个群女还在做什么事情啊又有另外一次，他<笑>就看到。野火啊，啊，就快烧到一个村庄里面去。你们知道以前的村庄多数都是那个木头盖的房子，还有草啊，哈、啊、哈、啊，为了凉嘛，啊，冬暖夏凉，所以他就用他那个气啊，这样吹一下，吹一下，风，风就停了，火就灭了。奇怪，人家火的话应该用水，怎么会用风啊？<笑>吹，吹就好像呃家风一样哈，不过没有，因为是他有神通广大嘛，那用口吹吹这样子，就火就灭了，风也停了，嗯。还有，啊，还不怎么厉害，嗯，他就用手挥过去这样子，全部那些被烧焦那些树跟草。回回复起来，啊，绿绿的，嗯 ，Go Green， 哈哈哈哈哈，他们的自自然 Go Green， 哈哈哈哈哈，好厉害哈、哦，这个学女真厉害，嗯，因为很多人哈、哦，越来越多人。那个知道他这种力量哈、啊，所以他的名誉越来越旺，嗯啊，大家都觉得他是最好的一个神通者哈、啊，神通广大。所以很多小女的女孩子，小女孩子跟你们那个样子，年轻的四十多岁以上那种。<笑>呃<笑>，少女的啊，<笑>就跑来<笑>要当他的徒弟，嗯，<笑>所以哈，自然哈，以后就越来越多人来跟他，所以他有很多所谓的弟子，嗯 ，OK， 又有一次，<笑>就是有证人
，这是他的徒弟的啊啊，他跟徒弟去在呃，出去在山上哈、哦，在山林里面，有时候要收集一些呃药草，还有矿物那些啊啊，给、okay、他们的弟子了互相讲说话。啊、哦，很快就那个会天黑了，我们怎么能够回家呢？嗯，他就巡礼就听听他们讲哈，他马上就呃把他的那个那个拐杖哈打打在一个很大的那个嗯石头哈，然后那个石头突然间都打开了啊，那个里面呢就一个很大很宽的那个山洞，嗯，漂亮干净。要有水，滴滴滴滴在一个小<笑>一个小、哦、小角落那边啊，哇！他们大家都进来休息，嗯，里面又有啊，已经有木材呢，啊，有水呢，又有一大锅的那个汤圆啊，嗯<笑>、啊，大概刚好过年。<笑>又有，又有那个中间那个洞，还有一个火锅，<笑>什么菜都有了。<笑>嗯，啊、哦，这么好哎、欸，我如果能够这样做多好，嘣一下这样子就什么都有，不用煮哎、欸，<笑>这样每一个荆棘就是这样子嘣一下，啊，用拐杖咚一下这样。有时候很忙，我认为如果这样能够，这样多好啊！我要去跟他问问看，怎么弄火锅跟汤圆不用煮的、啊？大概他在那边已经煮好放着嘛，哈、啊，是吧？嗯，然后就这样把石头把它脆脆起来，等一下还弄崩，它就有一个陷阱了，就打开了。也许他知道 electricity， 嗯，我们现在有时候这种自动的门有没有？啊，啊那个钮它就开了啊，不一定哈，它也许这样子弄自动的门哈，然后里面有已经放呃汤圆什么火锅已经放好了嘛，啊，就像师傅也是这样子，如果我不讲，他们也认为又这样蹦了一声，<笑>对啊，平常我一个人弄嘛，在那边煮完啊。都排好漂亮了，就跟在开门给他们进来了。他们说：“哦，是已经已经煮好了。”我说：“好了好了，请。<笑>”嗯，如果我放在我山洞里面，然后把石头盖起来，<笑>啊，然后我就用我那个拐杖蹦了一声呀，那个有一个按钮嘛，<笑>哎，开门那样啊。哈他说：“哦，请有东西吃。”他们一定认为是我神通广大的啊。柴玄女哈，她寿命很长啊，不是长生不老，跟我们认为这样子。听说她水长生不老，不过她活到一百多岁，嗯，而且是算蛮长生的哈，不是说长久就对了哈，也是很长就对了哈。啊，说。不过这个英文翻译 immortal， 不是说永久不死的那种，这些不对的哈。长生不老不是说永久哈，长就是说很长就对了。<笑>说昨天你们那个同胞还祝福我长久，不晓得他要我活多长嘛？<笑>我以为。我看不到他脑袋里面算多多多少百年呢？<笑>我不好意思问了，<笑>是人家世人的思想不能控制，<笑>就有国家不能控制人家，人家想怎么就想怎么，就不能这样子打开看看呢。<笑>我听着说长久住世界，我就怕死了。我一天过一天，已经已经很不怎么想要了，还要长久哦，最好不要太长啊，像他那个样哦，他的活都不是一一百多年，两百多年呢、啊、，My God， 两、啊、百多年
，大概吃很多补药吧，<笑>人生什么的，<笑>我不喝那些，目前还没，嗯。不过他哈、哦，其实到那个老年的时候，他的那个皮肤啊，听说还是像年轻一样的人，还有，呃，那个头发还是很黑的。有一天哈、哦，他的徒弟都听。听到呢，有一些那个小孩子的声音，在那个房子里面，群里的房子嘛，啊，听到里面有小孩的声音，他们就打开门，就看到玄女就飞到天空去了，跟一些那个长生不老的那些一起飞上去，嗯，故事完了。<笑>这个好像中国真的故事，嗯，中国有很多这样的故事啊，对对对，大概是九天，九天玄女我有听过，五彩色的石要五天啊，大概那个时候欧洲那也不好了，臭氧层啊啊，大概被窝一个洞跟我们现在一样，啊、所以它也补了哈啊，这个是。故事讲而已呢，石头怎么会补天嘛？哈，也就是说他自己的能力了，哈，他自己的元元气啊，那个冲上去补天就对了。我们也可以这样补啦，不过补来补去，他们还在破洞，所有懒得补了啊，让他们自己补啊。那些好的人，我们就帮他补啊，继续好的才好哈，让他做坏事，伤害别人，伤害别的众生也不大好。所以有一些人说：“为什么上帝不帮忙啊？救地球，救干嘛哈？我们要自己救自己，是吗？不能怪天，不能怪地。地球是很善良的，一天到晚给我们水果啊，啊菜啊，东西啊，我们菜在上面呢、啊，盖房子在上面，窝洞在那里，什么弄都可以，都保护我们啊，二十四小时。”那我们对待他不好嘛？放毒药啊，是吗？加弹呐、啊，原子弹丢在他呢，肚子那里啊，海那里啊，破坏很多环境，然后还怪地什么，是吗？天呐、啊，对我们也很好啊，不管我们看得到或是看不到天啊，看上去也好啊，啊，很空旷，是吗？空气也我们很好。太阳给我们温暖，那、啊、晚上也怕我们看不到路，还照一个月亮，<笑>免费的，<笑>是啊。如果我们家里有一个月亮，这样天天照的话，你你你付多少钱啊？<笑>还有雨呀、啊，下雨给我们哈、啊，还有那个空气里面也好，什么都给我们嘛、啊，就是我们不好嘛，是吗？啊，现在还怪谁呢？嗯，既然我们人类做很多不好事，天地还在这边尽量保护我们呢。一天到晚补这个补那个，超养成一天到晚破坏，然后一再补回来，人类就问为什么又补回来了？<笑>啊，就是天地的恩典嘛。嗯，一天到晚帮忙我们进那个地球哈，净化那个空气啊，帮忙几百。千亿年了啦，我们人都不好，没有醒过来，没有对自己好，还怪天怪地什么，是吗？因就有果嘛啊！我们怎怎么给别人痛苦，怎么能拿到那个快乐呢？是不是？嗯，你种苹果就有苹果吗？啊，嗯，好了，我们尽量给大家知道这些消息了哈啊，有因就有果了。嗯、啊，相信不相信也是这样啊，啊，哎，<笑>意思说，种苹果就有苹果，就这样嘛，我不用不用讲什么那么啰嗦，是吧？啊，所以你们做好事一定会得到好果，做不好事的话一定得不到好果的，就是这样，是吗？嗯，好，回去告诉大家哈 ，OK， 嗯，新年快乐，嗯。我走了，<笑>大家照顾自己 ，OK， 照顾同胞哈，嗯，照顾大陆同胞，嗯，同修还有同胞。
互相鼓励修行 ，OK， 嗯，还有诗书，嗯，做好事，不然的话，哎，如果那个抽阳城不破，地球也会破，不是说温温暖啊，会爆炸，偏假不留的，什么都可以发生的，业障太多的话。连那个天地也不能容纳嘛，嗯 ，OK。OK 哈，一路顺风啊！如果回去的话，一路顺风。万事如意啊！我也爱你们。所以才来看嘛。<笑>如果爱师傅，就帮忙救人 ，OK？ 尽量哈，我知道，知道你们很忙，我过来尽量能够多少就多少 ，OK？ 好 ，OK， 谢谢。保重。呀，谢谢。以后见，以后再见，啊 ，OK？ 以后再轮班来嘛。谢谢师傅。不是以后常常能来，不一定啊。<笑>第九号以后我们也可以，也许比较轻松一点哈。希望有这。哎，对呀。好，谢谢哦。拜。哈哈哈哈哈哈哈！啊，饼干糖果都是你们的哈。谢谢师傅，不客气。<笑>